TV. Welcome once again to the NBA bubble in a season like no other. This year's NBA Finals have suddenly become great theater. Game five bringing us an epic duel. LeBron James' sparkling play brought the Lakers to oh so close to a title. But Jimmy Butler's incredible performance has Miami alive and well. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Breen on hand, Rachel Nichols with us as well. The Miami Heat's magical run continues. They survive the Game 5 thriller, and here we are in Game 6. And Mark, Jimmy Butler did it again. He has had two spectacular performances where they think not only is there going to be a Game 7, they think they can win it all. He's been unbelievable. There's not much more that Jimmy Butler can do in this series for this Miami Heat team. Basically has done it all, putting them in position to fight against this favorite Los Angeles Lakers team, scoring mentality, turning the corner, being aggressive, continuing to keep his foot on the gas pedal, attacking the paint area, making plays against bigger, stronger guys. Does not matter. The ability down the stretch, they put the ball in his hands, attacks, doesn't score, but gets to the free throw line, sealing the victory. And then you need a stop, does exactly that. The biggest contribution to me that he's given this team is a belief, a belief that they can win it all. It may be delusional, but it puts them two wins away from doing that treat. And as good as he's been, they need timely help from the other players to get this job done. Duncan Robinson, seven threes in game five. In game six, they're going to need different players to step forward. You see Adebayo, Hero, and Crowder. None of them shot the ball particularly well in the last game. They're going to need to do that so they can have a more balanced attack. As for the Lakers, LeBron James was sensational once again, but in our Domino's pregame HQ, it's amazing how in the NBA, one play away from a title. Yeah, and this play has been much dissected, and there's no right or wrong answer. I think he made the right decision by passing, or he could have made the right decision by shooting. Here, he would have liked to have this shot been more pinpointed. It took Green out of his shooting rhythm, but still enough time and space for a great shooter like Green to make it. But what James did was he put on a phenomenal shooting show with all of this time and space. Six threes in the last ball game. When you guard LeBron James, you can't usually take away both the shot and the drive. Most games, if he makes threes like this, they're going to win. And you look at his efficiency in this finals, 58% from the floor when the game, game plan is directed at trying to limit your efficiency. Coming into the series, everybody said the Lakers had the two best players, even me. And we were right. That was coming into this series. During this series, the two best players clearly has been LeBron James and Jimmy Butler. Anthony Davis has got to find a way to be much more dominant against his smaller Heat team. The last three games, he's a minus two. Hobbled or not, he's got to be better, and the Lakers need him to be better, Mike. Well, Mark, he is playing with heel and ankle issues, but says no problem. He'll be ready to go. Meanwhile, as for the Heat, as you see Davis getting ready, they need another outstanding performance from Duncan Robinson moments ago. Spoke with Rachel Nichols. Thanks so much, Mike. Duncan, you have beaten these guys twice. What have you learned that you could then take it and beat them a third time? Uh, just that we're capable. You know, we've made adjustments uh, throughout the series, and we feel like we're getting better. So, obviously, we're excited for tonight. You did not have the best game, too. Jimmy Butler actually had you come to his hotel room for a few hours after the game, give you a little bit of confidence. He says you need to be shooting a lot for them to win tonight. What does that mean to you when your leader has that kind of faith in you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, this whole team, uh, coaching staff, teammates, they all instill confidence in me. So I just try to go do my job, shoot it when I'm open, sometimes when I'm not. Excellent, Duncan. Thanks so much. Right. Good luck you, tonight. Everyone else stick with us. We've got lineups and tip-off right after this break. Living in the moment and not taking it for granted, knowing that the opponent, the man that's across from you, has that same feeling. James and Butler throwing haymakers at each other. Absolutely spectacular all night long. That's the beauty of the game, being able to compete at the highest level. But our confidence ain't going nowhere. It's going to stay high. I'm going to make sure that it stays high. Ain't nobody going home yet. We're still here. And this presentation of the NBA Finals will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NBA Finals on ABC. We're all set to go. Game six upon us, and it's presented by YouTube TV. The Advent Health Arena. The Miami Heat and the LA Lakers. Of course, Jimmy Butler has been the story. 
He has played some all-time finals basketball through the first five games. Two triple-doubles, one 40-point triple-double, another 35-point triple-double. And throughout the finals, he's kept his teammates involved. Ten or more assists in three of the five games. Hadn't done that in the first 70 playoff games of his career. And as the stakes grow higher, so do Butler's minutes, averaging six more per game in the finals than the first three rounds, including game five, where he only sat for 48 seconds. And now looking to go right back at it again here in game six. As we look at the starting lineups, delivered by Taco Bell and some interesting notes in terms of lineups for tonight. Look who's in the starting lineup. Alex Caruso, his first start of the playoffs. Dwight Howard will not start tonight. Caruso started a couple of games in the regular season, but first time in the postseason for Caruso. Meanwhile, for Miami, the same starting five, but Goran Dragic has been activated. So therefore, there's a chance that he will see some action tonight as we're set to go. Fascinating to see how both teams react after that thriller on Friday night. And the Caruso insertion into the starting lineup, a huge story. Guys, what do you think in terms of why Howard came out and why Caruso the one to be chosen to start? Well, I don't think, well, I know Dwight Howard didn't play well in the last ball game. Caruso's a gutsy call. If it was me, quite honestly, I wouldn't have made the change to Caruso. I would have stayed big and probably went with JaVale McGee. A welcome sight for the Lakers starting off with Anthony Davis knocking down a shot, coach. And I think you're seeing Danny Green pick up full court. It's all about defense. They want their best perimeter defenders in the game to start the game out. Caruso is on Tyler Hero. Anthony Davis has played some of his best ball. Pass inside. Oh, gorgeous feed and out of bio with a difficult finish, but got it to go through. Davis has played some of his best ball than the Lakers had when he has played the center position as opposed to the power forward. Crowder's guarding him here. Anthony Davis steps back. That jumper won't go. Rebound goes to Robinson. I really expect Bam Adebayo to play much better. He's a guy that didn't point fingers, didn't make any excuses, embraced it, and quite emphatically said, I've got to be better. And the Lakers have to locate Duncan Robinson in transition. He was wide open. Robinson having the seven three-pointers in game five, 26 points. The undrafted second-year player. Hero pass inside. Thrown a rock, and it's going to be Laker ball. The Lakers have not lost back to get back to back games all playoffs. They're 4-0 after a loss. But this is the first time in these playoffs with there's some real stress, some real pressure to win. Certainly it's not a closeout game, but it's pretty darn close. They do not want to have to play a game seven. Davis calling for the ball. Jimmy Butler's on him. Shot clock winding down. Davis leans in, shoots it over. Butler, an air ball, and a 24-second violation. And that's one of the things that works in the Heat's advantage, Coach. Russo's not a shooter. So the ability to double-team LeBron or Anthony Davis on their catches, living with, now he can make the shot, but defensively, I'm willing to live with him. And I think also, too, it's how much do we want to try to get Anthony Davis going versus get our best player involved in as many plays as possible, LeBron James. Good defense there from Davis. Forces the turnover, and James with the flush down the other end. And that was their greatest advantage in Game 5. They absolutely were devastating in transition, 25-4 to 4 versus the Heat. With 25 fast break points, the most they've had in the finals. And Danny Green misses the three-pointer. First Green was the big topic over the last couple of days. Had that open look at the end of game five that could have won the title for the Lakers. Pass inside to Adebayo. Knocked loose, picked up by James. We'll get back to that in a moment. Great hands by Caruso getting back into the pitch. James barrels in and banks it home. James guarding Jimmy Butler as the Lakers have an early four-point lead. Duncan Robinson, that quick release, and <laughs> knocks down the three. Davis and Caruso play catch. Caruso in the corner, Caldwell Pope, and he's fouled. Well, they're going dribble handoff. 
and Caldwell Pope shot the gap. Now, most times you would say you should chase over against Duncan Robinson, but he's right there. I actually think that's good defense. If he's going to make those shots, you just can't foul him. Duncan Robinson picking up his first personal, sending Caldwell Pope to the line. So I mentioned Danny Green. He addressed earlier about that situation that was so much talked about and he answered it just like he approaches everything like a like a professional like a man and with a lot of grace and the team has obviously been very vocal behind him including Frank Vogel he said as a coach I take that play every single time he missed the shot that happens yeah, in this league the I, best has ever done it has missed shots in this league that happened Let's check in with Rachel. Yeah, Mike, Danny spoke to us this morning. He said, if I could have that play back again, I would give anything to get that shot back. Trust me. He said, looking at the film, and he looked at it a lot, guys. He said he had more time than he realized in the moment. He thinks he rushed it a little bit, shot a little bit off balance. But this is where him being a vet playing in his fourth NBA Finals is so important. He's had some great performances on this stage, and frankly, he's had some bad nights on this stage before that have been followed by great nights again. So he knows that that next good shot really is just around the corner, and that is the way he is approaching tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Offensive foul call down the other end. And this was the other night in the final seconds. James triple team and hit the front of the rim. You know, the thing I'll say is, yeah, he might have wanted to have that shot back. LeBron James would want to have that pass back, and Markeith Morris would want to have that pass back. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in a game, and I, I just, this idea that he needs to apologize or be talked to, I, he's I, a pro. i tell you what he don't need to do is watch more film of it. You missed a shot, that happens. And, and let me just address the elephant in the room. I'm embarrassed for the people that had the audacity to send death threats to him or his fiance. We're better than that as a people. It's just a game. I'm not sure we're better than that. Dan Davis drives, ball knocked away by Crowder. By the way, Davis picked up that last Laker foul. That's his first. Lakers by three. Tyler Hero, nice little fake. Duncan Robinson has some room again. That's two three-pointers for Duncan Robinson already. And the Heat have tied it up. Robinson was just terrific in game five with the 26 points. Seven of 13 from downtown. Second time this playoff that he's had seven three-pointers. Did it against Indiana in the first round. Shot clock winding down. Danny Green's going to have to put it up. Just gets it off in time. Comes up short. Rebound right back to Green. Davis fakes the three. Back out to Green. Corner three-pointer. That's good. Danny Green, by the way, has been a winner throughout his career. Won a national championship at Carolina. Won an NBA title with San Antonio. And, of course, part of the Raptors championship team last year in Toronto. Bam out of bio, floats it up. That comes up short. They have missed some very makeable point blank shots as James continues to attack in transition. And over and over again, when they have numbers in transition, they convert. Coast to coast, LeBron James. James Capers quickly going over to the Laker bench to say something as we have a timeout. Again, when he has numbers, the defense isn't set. This is an amazing athlete. What a finish. Provided by Goodyear. Driving us forward with every move. Goodyear, more driven. Well, good news for the Miami Heat. Goran Dragic activated for tonight's game. See, Dragic, this is before he's been going through nonstop treatment, working out, trying to get back on the court after injuring that left foot in game one. It was a torn plantar fascia. He missed the next four games. And coming into the playoffs through the first three rounds, he was the Miami Heat's leading scorer in the postseason, just under 21 points per game. Again, he's activated. This is right now, trying to keep himself loose. Whether or not he plays, we don't know. He is desperate to play. And Butler has picked up a lot of the scoring slack with Dragic out of the lineup. Got Anthony Davis on him. 
Picks it out to Crowder. Crowder misses a three and a foul call against Danny Green, who's a very upset with a call. And it's another three-point attempt with a foul, so three free throws for Jay Crowder. Boy, it did not look like there was much there. Frank Vogel saying the kick out is why Crowder. And, and made Crowder it falls all the time on jump shots. We saw Duncan Robinson do it last game, searching for the call. And this is a tough one because he does kick out, but Danny Green does keep pursuing forward. He didn't ever come to a stop. So I think it's the right call. You know what? On that second one there, he's in the landing area. Yeah. That one clearly showed it. The whole thing for me is making sure the referees in these type of situations see the action and don't guess. Make sure that you're right whichever way you decide to call a no call. Now, and we talked to Eric Spolstra about how they're teaching to defend the three-point shot. He said they used to run drills with just get to the shooter and hand contest. He goes, now you have to do this bizarre side swipe and try not to, to get near the shooter's leg kicks. You know how many drills I did with this guy? Closing out, chopping your feet. Do it again, do it again. And you know how many times it got done in the game? <laughs> Come on. But don't players have to change the way they've always closed out on three-pointers in, in, in some instances? I think it depends on who you're closing to, Mike. When you're closing to as they double Butler in the post. Hero gets away, poked away from Caldwell Polk, 1.4 on the shot clock. But you do have to be ultimately so self-conscious of not fouling the shooter. Rondo comes in and Danny Green will take a seat. And to me, coach, the way that the Lakers are defending the pick and roll action with Bam involved, whoever's handling the basketball they have to make up their mind to be aggressive the way they're defending go to the cup look to score trust that bam will get it off the offensive board. absolutely two turnovers trying to thread the needle pass inside layup is good with 1.4 caruso got caught a uh, nice out of bounds play but it's also james jumped to the corner to try to protect the pass to the corner and the pass was then allowed right at the basket area i don't know if that was what they want to do to take away the corner or if that was a mistake by James. Either way, great execution for Miami. Caldwell Pope misses it. Good boxing out. Davis couldn't quite get his hands on the ball. All tied at 13. We play just over seven minutes. And look how Caldwell Pope's just face guarding Duncan Robinson. Hero kicks it out. Crowder is open. Caldwell Pope comes at him and Crowder unable to connect. Both teams have struggled shooting here in the opening minutes. Crowder on LeBron James. Nice feed inside to Rondo. Beautiful pass from James. That's his second assist. A great read. Doesn't have the shooting on the floor as Miami shrinks defensively, but a tremendous cut and fine to Rondo. Bad pass from Hero. Caldwell Pope the steal, drives down the other end and lays it up and in. And that's Hero's second turnover each team already with four turnovers Butler fakes a pass drives in on James couple of fakes back up top to hero hero shot blocked from behind by Davis and an offensive foul as hero charges into James after having a shot block Clearly contact, good job by LeBron coming over in the previous play to turn over carelessness, what you can't do against this Laker team. Good defense by the Lakers, good job of turning good defense into transition offense. And that's what you said though, again, though, that was showing a drive not to score, but to pass. Rondo finds Davis, Davis doubled. Kuzma just on the court, can't hit the three-pointer. Lakers just one of six from downtown to start, as James gets his early rest. Kendrick Nunn just into the game. He nails a three-pointer. He was huge for them in the last ball game. Gave them a burst of energy on the offensive end, and for the first time since being back, was playing with extreme confidence. He had 14 points in game five, Mark. This is what he did all season long for this team. 
Give him credit. Got it back, and when his team needed a punch, he has delivered. Well, if the Miami Heat can extend the series, the NBA Finals would continue Tuesday on ABC. NBA Countdown would begin our coverage at 8.30. Tip-off for a possible Game 7 shortly after 9 Eastern. Right now, let's listen to Laker coach Frank Vogel. Let's go get it, brother. Let's go. Come on. Let's get it. This crowd's going nuts, isn't it, in here in Miami? It's crazy. Good beer! Good beer, baby! That's it. You got to get that. got to get that. Contain! 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 There it is! Listen, our defense looks outstanding. Okay, that's that's a start I'm looking for defensively. That's who we are. The 46-year-old Vogel, his first year as head coach of the Lakers. It's called while Pope lines up the three-pointer. That won't go. Davis fighting for it, gets the offensive rebound, back up and throws it down with authority. But that's the way he has to dominate, especially this smaller Miami Heat team. You talk about he'll be a Hall of Famer. But you talk about the great players in the history of this game, the great power forwards. They're not allowing themselves to be defended by Andre Godala with all due respect in this small heat lineup. Kuzma knocks it out of bounds. He was dominant in games one and two, but not as much the last three games here of these finals. You name them. Tim Duncan, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Kevin McHale, Kevin Garnett. They would dominate this small lineup, and that's got to be the mentality of Anthony Davis. His combination of size and skill he is just a terror for opponents duncan robinson a little out of control gets it back to Igadala. jimmy butler with a rare three-pointer and the rebound goes to rondo butler's only taken 11 threes in these finals rondo drives and finishes rondo off the bench with a couple of buckets and then forced a turnover Rondo struggled in game five, but a quick impact here in game six. Well, he struggled throughout the series to score. What has he done tonight? Two layups. A cutting layup, a driving layup, and then, as Mark mentioned, forced the turnover, and Miami already six turnovers. And that's awful defense by Jimmy Butler, too, not staying in front of Rondo. Now you saw Dragic sitting there, and it looks like he's about to check in. Rondo inside, lost it, gets it back. James fakes, James drives, throws it up to Davis, and Davis banks it home. A seven-point first quarter lead for the Lakers. Jimmy Butler looking. Marquis Morris has come on for the Lakers. Duncan Robinson back to none. Nice penetration from none. Butler the corner jumper. Three-pointer for Jimmy Butler. That's only his fourth three that he's made in the finals. And it looks like Dragic is about to check in. Davis spins against Iguodala. The baseline jumper, high floater is good. Anthony Davis, eight points here in the first. He's four of six from the field. And a whistle away from the ball. Goran Dragic is going to make his entrance after missing the last four games. That left foot, the tear in his plantar fascia. It's just great to see him out on the floor. He was playing some of the best basketball of his career. Was sensational for the first three rounds, and it was just destroying him that he couldn't be out there with his teammates. Well, it's just great to see as a fan of the game. Win, lose, or draw, he deserves to be on the floor. I don't think you deserve to be on the floor. You earn your right to be on the floor. And Eric Spolster obviously thinks he's going to help him. And he throws up another or a beautiful lob pass that he was doing through the first three rounds to Bam Adebayo and a foul on the pass. James arguing. Mike, what's wrong with this guy, though, man? He doesn't like a happy ending, like a love, <laughs> you know. You don't want to see the way that he competed all year long. There's not a side of you that, no matter who wins, wants to see him yeah, there's a face the NBA Finals. That's the one side of the brain. The other side of the brain is, as a coach, you got to do right by your whole team. It's not about the end. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about as a coach. I'm saying as a fan of the game, which I said, we take a look at the injury, Mike. That's what happened in game one. 
a left foot right away. He only played 15 minutes. And you could just see he was so upset that he has worked so hard to get back on the floor. Back to you, Mr. Head Coach. You don't enjoy the fact that he's I back do. healthy and whole? Well, first of all, I don't think he's healthy and whole, but I think it's a harder decision than what you say as James attacks the rim without any help and one. Uh, now a chance for a three-point play. By the way, it's Anthony Davis that down the other end of the floor. That foul on him was his second personal here in the first. This is when LeBron James is a nightmare to defend. And he makes up his mind that he's going to put the ball down and attack the paint area. And he clipped uh, it, uh, Crowder on that drive. The foul was on Crowder, his first. Eric's supposed to upset. Looks like they're going to challenge it. That's what it looks like, a challenge whether or not LeBron James threw an elbow. Shine brightest when they got us. Let's yeah. go get it. Butler goes right to the rim. Butler vicious. I'm against the wall. It's not like it's never been done before. One thing about this Heat team, they're not afraid. He's a bucket. We're not gonna lay down. We're here to win. Back here at Game Six, 58 seconds remaining, and they are looking in that last drive from LeBron James. Lakers right now leading by seven. You see the elbow come back right into the face of Crowder. It's not a challenge. It's an official review. Is that just kind of normal moving your trying to get your arms free or no, they determined that he threw the right elbow? Well, I don't know if it'll be hostile, but that's an offensive foul. So they're looking to see if it's your favorite play, the hostile act, Jeff. Don't don't bait me. And then <laughs> and then if I say something, I get in trouble. Come on. There's Jimmy Capers, the crew chief. Didn't have, his mic yep, didn't have his microphone on. Now he's going over to explain it to Eric Spolstra. No hostile act is, is the call, so James will shoot the one free throw. Trying to show exactly what he did on <laughs> that play. So Crowder does pick up the personal foul and James with a chance for a three-point play already doing a little bit of everything so could they have gone back and reviewed that though after that that it's not a hostile act review it for an offensive foul because to me he clearly clips him in the jaw I, I don't know how that's not something I agree out of bio the Dragic. Well, it's just good to say his name, seeing him out there. It steps back, puts up a three. And that went off. Obviously going to be completely out of rhythm as the ball goes out of bounds. Lakers get it back with 39.8 remaining. And Bam Adebayo, to me, has to set screens sometimes. He's slipping out trying to get behind his defender for the lob. But when you're being guarded by James, you've got to get some separation for your, your offensive player. Kuzma fakes, now drives, shut off on the baseline. Pass inside to Morris. Caruso kicks it out to James. James down the lane, back out to Morris. Up top, Caruso is straight on three, way short, and rebound to Adebayo. Shot clock is turned off. Lakers do not have a foul to give. Just not a smart foul right there by yep. Kuzma. So that'll put Crowder at the free throw line. And they have done a terrific job in this first quarter the Lakers have. They have been dominant defensively. Absolutely dominant. Crowder three points in the early going. Acquired back in February with Andre Iguodala. Election season is here, and the NBA family encourage you to make your voting plan today. Don't wait. Visit vote.nba.com for everything you need to make your voice heard. Uh, Dragic gets some minutes, gets a little sweat going, and gets congratulations from his teammates. So desperate to get back on the floor. Bring Solomon Hill in last possession defensively to try to slow down 
the catch and pace of LeBron James with 5.4 to go in this quarter. Hill has only played three of the five games, played about 23 minutes total. Final seconds, no foul to give for Miami. Caruso drives, just gets it off in time. And it would not have counted as the first quarter comes to an end. LeBron James and Anthony Davis with a hot start. James nine points, five rebounds, three assists, aggressive going to the basket. Davis had eight points, but picked up two fouls. First quarter is done. Lakers by eight. A finals presented by YouTube TV. I'm here with Lakers coach Frank Vogel. Frank, really stifling defensive effort by your guys in that first quarter. Jimmy Butler, only three shots. What are they doing that's working so well? Yeah, we're, we're, we have great activity. You know, we're executing our, our pick and roll defense really well and our switches really well. He's got to do a better job getting to three-point shooters. They got five threes in the first quarter. Emotional moment for the Heat when Goran Dragic checks back in the game. How does that change things for you in terms of what you're trying to do out there, especially defensively? Well, we have coverages in place on how we want to, you know, uh, compete against Goran. He's a great offensive player. He's a leading scorer coming into this. Uh, we've got to execute those coverages. Thank you so much, Frank. Yep. Back to you, Mike. All right, Rachel, thank you. Adebayo scores and Rondo scores. And Butler draws the foul. By the way, Rondo is only averaging six and a half points per game in these finals. Already has six points off the bench. Yeah, and they're all layups. Now, this is just not good enough defense. I mean, Jimmy Butler is a better defender than that. You don't have any real shot blocking in the game because Adebayo is out guarding Morris on the three-point line. It makes it imperative, as Butler misses the free throw, to stay in front of the ball. How about Miami has missed four free throws already in this series. They're shooting 88% from the free throw line In game five, they were 21 of 22 including eight for eight in the fourth quarter It's been huge for them, but struggling here to start as Butler goes one for two Rondo James Markeith Morris Kuzma as Rajon Rondo off the bench now nine points in six minutes and the lead is ten. He's been outstanding, but give him credit. Started off attacking the paint, gets three layups. Now all of a sudden that three-pointer is not as challenging as it usually is. Now defending Kendrick Nunn. Nunn and Dragic out there at the same time. Butler goes up top. Andre Godala. Three-pointer. Oh, high rebound out of bio, and he's tripped up. And a foul call against the Lakers. An offensive punch by Rondo and poor defense by the Heat. Who's there defending Rondo? Where's the communication? Nobody there. Steps in rhythm. Wide open shot. He works on that every single day. That last foul was on Rondo. His first. Butler hands off. Vigadala's going to try another three-pointer. That's too strong. Taken away, Butler, who was in Rondo's hands. Danny Green guarding Kendrick Nunn. He gets inside. Difficult shot won't go. The tip is up. That misses as well. And James tips the rebound to himself. Pass inside to Morris. Foul on the entry pass as Dragic got caught on a mismatch. Each game, one lucky fan can win beer for a year. If either team reaches 95 points, tweet hashtag ultra beer bonus and hashtag sweepstakes at Michelob Ultra for a chance to win. Miami fans hoping for that game seven. Right now, their team down by 10 as Tyler Hero returns. Interestingly, Frank Vogel brings back Caruso for Rondo, probably for what I would say suspect is a short quick brief rest at a bio guarding LeBron James James goes to the rim once again lays it up and in and he's in double figures and a timeout called by Eric Spolstra as the Lakers go up a dozen Think about a coach the paint points of the Lakers and the awful defense by the heat right and there's they were helping with everybody now, that's a half-hearted help. That's sticking an arm in there. You got to stick your body in front of LeBron James if you want to win.
Jimmy Butler with a slow start at both ends here in the post. They come and double. And it makes it for a very rough possession. And then defensively, just getting blown by. He's a better defender than that. He can't lose concentration when he's not on LeBron James. The Heat overall shooting just 35% from the field. And again, they've missed four free throws. Have six turnovers inside, won't go. James bumps into Butler. James just bullying down the lane, blocked from behind. But lots of contact as James will go to the free throw line once again. He's tough to defend in these situations. He's got his mind made up. Forces all sorts of contact. But he is absolutely aggressive trying to win himself another ring. And that's why when he drives it like that in transition, you've got to load. He's got to see the second whole body. It can't be a body and a half. That foul was on Butler, his first, as James misses a free throw. So if you're out of bio here, you got to get all the way back and in front and make him kick the ball. James was sensational in game five. 40 points, 13 assists, misses both free throws. He played 42 minutes. Already with 11.6 boards here tonight. 12 point lead for the Lakers. Two and a half gone by in the second. Dragic chased by Danny Green, goes down a lane, high off the glass, rattles around and drops in. Dragic with his first points in his return. That's a tough play to defend, coach. Full speed ahead. Going to his left hand, put so much pressure on your defense. James and Butler matched up again. Caruso sets the screen. Danny Green fakes. James is down. Shot won't go. James holding his left hip. Slow to get up. Drag his bang. That left hip of LeBron's. He was trying to get past it. And Morris went in to stop the play. Morris picks up his second foul. He just wanted to, they were five on four, wanted to commit that foul, get the whistle blown. Dragic and Adebayo work so well together. Dragic gets inside, leans a couple of times, tries to go underneath, won't go. Adebayo tried to get it. But Danny Green did a nice job boxing out, and it's Laker ball. Lakers are shooting 58% from the field. Green kicks it out, Morris, wide open look. Three-pointer from the corner is good. And it's a 13-point lead. Outstanding screen by Caruso, not allowing Hero to contest a shot of Morris in the corner. That's good basketball. Damn, out of bio, and a travel. Picked up his pivot foot, and that is turnover number seven for Miami. That's what we're talking about. See the screen by Caruso? Hero's thinking, let me go contest the shot. Caruso does a great job of reading. Get him that look. Morris didn't score in game five. As James dribbles it off a foot, gets it back, kicks it out. Morris, same spot. Couldn't get it to fall, and Dragic the rebound. Crowder to Butler. Butler drives on Kuzma. Little Euro step, flips it up and rolls it in. Jimmy Butler now with six points. They got to get him going to put maximum pressure on the Laker defense to try to get some other guys some better looks. Caruso, the floater. Shot won't go. The tip is good. Caruso getting his first playoff start. Puts the Lakers up 13. Butler and Kuzma again matched up. Butler backs in, kicks it back up top to Dragic. Still seven on the 24. Butler gets into the paint. Crowder gets a good look. Three-pointer won't go. Rebound taken by Kuzma. Caruso floats it into James, and he's grabbed by Crowder. And it's going to be the third team foul against the Heat, and the third on Crowder. Make that second on Crowder. James goes right to the bench. Frank Vogel inserting 
Caruso into the starting lineup, and he has responded defensively, timely plays, and the extra effort getting that put back. He has become an invaluable piece of this Laker team. Anthony Davis back in for James, as mentioned. Caruso drives, nice sidestep, finds Davis in the corner, falling away. Won't go, Danny Green back up top to Rondo. And a new 14 on the shot clock. Rondo cross court to Green, good look for three, that one off. Anthony Davis trying to get the offensive rebound, but Crowder comes away. It's great effort on the offensive board by Davis. Bam out of bio drives. Butler's tip out to Tyler Hero. Hero, tough shot in the corner, hits the side of the backboard. Rondo pushing the other way. Rondo drives, another scoop layup, lays it up and in. 11 points for Rondo off the bench. And the Heat call timeout as the Lakers go up 15. The vet, Rondo, excuse me, playoff Rondo that is, about to be championship Rondo again, flat out getting it done for Lakerland. But really deserve a dozen roses, who got her hair done and didn't think I even noticed, she just happy she chose him, but she the one who chose me, that's what's more important, I give her more game than pro- Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. 15-point lead for the Lakers here in game six. As you see, Rajon Rondo was at a good game one, helped the turnaround after the slow start. Terrific game two, but he's been up and down since then, but a sensational start here in game six. He's hit all five of his shots, including a three. Has 11 points in eight minutes. The Laker bench played poorly in game five, but they have contributed to this lead right now here in the first half. Butler tied up to Adebayo. Picks it out to Tyler Hero, shot clock winding down, gets inside, blocked. And a 24-second violation. During that last timeout, you guys were talking about how good the Laker defense has been so far. Absolutely swarming. Their ball pressure has totally gotten Miami out of whatever comfort they normally have. If you're Miami, the good news is there's a lot left in this ball game. The bad news is you don't have one guy that has played well on either side of the floor to start this ball game. Duncan Robinson's back in. Rondo. Shot clock down to five. Rondo gets across the lane, spins inside, left-handed layup. Oh, Rajon Rondo putting on a show here in the first half. 13 points on six of six from the field. Crowder. And rattles that one in. Boy, did the Miami Heat need that three-pointer. Davis floats it up and in. He's got double figures now. Crowder on the drive. Crowder on the finish. Back-to-back -back buckets from Drake Crowder. Nice fake called while Polk kicks it out to Morris. And an offensive foul. Jake Crowder at the other end draws the charge. Well, this is a really good right to left spin as the shot clock winds down over the very agile Bam out of bio. That's just a beautiful finish. Caldwell Pope's offensive foul, his second personal. We're coming up on four and a half remaining here in the second. And the foul is going to go against Danny Green. And Mike, I didn't like that offensive foul call. I, I, I see a couple times tonight where guys are jumping in after a guy has left his feet. I, I just think right now uh, we're gifting too many offensive fouls that should be either play-ons or blocks. To me, he's going... He's avoiding that. He's jumping by him. I agree, Jeff. Butler drives. Double team. Last touch by the Lakers. 11 to shoot for Miami. Danny Green picked up the second, explaining to his teammates how, how he didn't commit that last foul.
Kendrick Nunn gets down the lane, blocked by Davis, saved by Caruso. What a defensive sequence by Anthony Davis. Caldwell Pope draws the foul, banks at home, and one. Contavious Caldwell Pope with a chance for a three point play. If you rave about the defensive play by Anthony Davis, how many times we've we seen this in the last couple of months? His ability to change or alter shots, setting the tone for these Lakers on the defensive end, creating offensive opportunities. That's stellar. Adebayo picks up his first. Caldwell Pope connects. He's got seven points. He had 16 points in game five, 15 in game four. He's had some really good stretches in these finals. None gets away from Caruso. Passed out of bio, out of his hands. Davis picks it up, and Davis is fouled. That, they're in the penalty with 4-1 remaining and a 17-point lead. And I said it earlier, the Miami Heat perimeter guys are turning the corner, think pass, instead of thinking score. Let your bigs and bam do the job on the offensive boards. But the Lakers have imposed their will against this Heat team offensively. They have forced the issue defensively. And I, I think... Eric Spolstra has a dilemma right now. Davis is owning the lane. The only way to get Davis out of the lane is to put in a shooting five. Kelly Olynyk had success in game two and three. Do you insert him to try to reignite your offense and try to draw Davis out of the paint? That foul was out of bio, and that's his second. He has not been the same since injuring that neck in game one. Missed two games, has played in games four, five, and six. Anthony Davis, meanwhile, he's now 27 for 27 from the free throw line in the finals, and he's hit 38 consecutive free throws in these playoffs. Sensational free throw shooting. You see how he plugged, Davis again, plugged up the lane on Jimmy Butler's drive. He can guard half the driver and still, because of his athleticism, take away lob passes. Good ball to Isle from Caldwell Pope. Out of Isle, a couple of dribbles. Nice feed inside to Butler. Butler changes, layup, count it, and the foul. Butler found an angle, drew some contact, and a chance for a three-point play. But right now, everything offensively for the Miami Heat, it's it's a grind. The Lakers are into them. Clearly the contact underneath, and Butler gets the basket. Going to the line for the possible three-point play. And it's because of how hard the guards are chasing these shooters, and Davis is backing off out of bio to make it really a challenge as Butler misses another free throw. Wow, the Heat have missed five free throws. That has been one of their real strengths all playoffs, especially here in the finals. Davis comes up short. Rebound to Kendrick Nunn. Nunn pushing the pace. Crowder fakes the three. Back up Crowder, hand in his face. Comes up short, rebound. Goes to Rajon Rondo. Well, that is beautiful defense by the Lakers. Multiple effort. Pulls out with a contest. Pass inside. An errant pass off of LeBron James. And a turnover for the Lakers. That's their sixth. The upcoming final schedule. Will there be a game seven? And if the Heat win this one, it'll be Tuesday night. Tip-off will be shortly after nine on ABC. Under three to play second quarter. And Caruso bumps into Adebayo. Both teams in the penalty. Caruso's first. So free throws for Bam Adebayo. Mike, did you see that Russell Westbrook left an $8,000 tip for the staff at the hotel that the Rockets stayed in? And, you know, again, that was sources, so I, I think it's probably some grain of truth to it. I think the winning team should give a playoff share to the staff of that hotel as a gesture for the kindness, the service, 
that they've received while here in the bubble. For three months. That's a that's a wonderful idea. I'm I, I'm sure, certainly hoping that whether it's a playoff share, but that they'll be treated properly. Another missed free throw by the Heat. Well, I like the gesture. I like the thought, but there you go again, counting somebody else's money. <laughs> L listen, I can count Mr. Arison's money or Miss Miss Bus's money. <laughs> they got enough money I can count. They've done an incredible job, though. You're right. The staff has been off the charts. Crowder, meanwhile, gets a little over aggressive, picks up his third, and Anthony Davis is going to go back to the free throw line. And AD does, doing a great job moving without the ball, getting position and fighting for position. I want to go back to what you said about Westbrook, Coach, because there's people that won't give him any credit and say, well, he's got so much money that 8,000 doesn't matter. 8,000 is 8,000. What an incredible gesture by Russell Westbrook saying thank you in a big way to people that truly appreciate it. and left his room clean <laughs> how's your room by the way not clean <laughs> no matter how far back you go we've never seen anything quite like this Masterpiece from Jimmy oh, what a play. this is history in the making the NBA finals it's a whole new game now right now game six has belonged to the Lakers. The first miss of the finals for Anthony Davis. The save, but he was out of bounds when he got it. Out of bio, so it's going to be Laker ball. We'll get a new 14 on the shot clock. But again, you're, you're trying to win a championship. And you allow Caruso being boxed out by Jimmy Butler and Bam out of bio. And he outworks them. And then Davis throws it down with the foul. Rondo with the perfect bounce pass. The lead is 20 and a chance for a three-point play. That's just a really nice play by Rondo and Davis playing with so much more force on his duck-ins, on his cuts, and on the offensive glass. This game has completely gotten away from Miami. Davis, meanwhile, after hitting his first 27 free throws of the finals, misses a pair. Butler, little sidestep, difficult shot, won't go. James tips it. Rondo throws it ahead to Caldwell Pope. Caldwell Pope goes up, layup, won't go. Tip misses. Caldwell Pope again. And Contavious Caldwell Pope knocks it down. The lead is 22. The Lakers right now out hustling the heat. And they've got to get Davis somehow out of the lane. L.A. looking to push every opportunity. Beautiful pass. Caruso banks it in. A precise bounce pass from LeBron James. And the Lakers have blown it open here in the second quarter. James with 11 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. Timeout call by the Heat. The Lakers pouring it on, an avalanche here in the second. Taking the fight away from the Heat. And how about this pass by LeBron James, threading the needle on point to Caruso, who catches it and does his job by finishing. On the Oculus halftime with Maria, Jalen, Jay, and Paul. Paul, will there be a Hollywood ending right now? This one is a bludgeoning 58 34, 24 point lead. Still just the second quarter, but the Lakers just dominant, especially on the defensive end. But look how Davis is playing back off. He just, it's just hard on every penetration to get what they need to. All well, Pope to James. And James and Davis have been excellent, but the supporting cast, really a huge impact between Rondo and Caruso and Caldwell Pope. Rondo drives, gets inside, back out, Caldwell Pope for three, puts it in. 61 to 34 with a minute to play here on the second. They're shooting 57% from the field. Hendrick Nunn drives, back out, stolen by James. James and Butler. James drives, stolen by Butler, but couldn't hold on. And it'll be Laker ball. Again, watch how Anthony Davis is playing. So far back in the lane. Taking away any back cuts. Can guard both the penetration and the lob. And then he defensive rebounds. He's basically playing center field. 
and daring Bam to shoot as KCP knocks down another one. This is a clinic on both sides of the floor by the Lakers. A 30-point lead here in the second quarter. Kendrick Nunn drives, blocked by Davis. Throws it ahead, Rondo. Caldwell Pope tries it again. And a rebound falls to the floor, picked up by Kendrick Nunn. What a dominant second period for L.A. 25 seconds remaining here in the half. Nunn drives back door, lays it up and in. And a rare mistake defensively by the Lakers here in the first two quarters. And at halftime, Miami's got to try to find some fight. Does it look daunting? Absolutely. Would it take a miracle? Most definitely. But you got to give yourself a chance. Rondo up top to Davis. Davis puts up the three, and that will end the first half. Lakers trying to throw the knockout punch here in the first two quarters. A 28-point lead, the second largest halftime lead in NBA Finals history. The Lakers shoot 54%. Jimmy Butler in the heat in a deep hole as they try and keep this Finals going to a game seven. How about Rajon Rondo, six for six from the field. He had 13 points off the bench. And set up his teammates, Caldwell Pope with 15 first half points. Lakers, the huge lead here in game six. At Chipotle, Welcome back to the NBA Finals presented by YouTube TV. Great start, great charge, great start. Great job down there, brother. Great job. Great job. Keep our turnovers low. Touch the paint. Make something good happen. Yeah! <laughs> I see you, AC. Hey, I need six minutes of great defense here. Good D. Good D. Good D. Good D. What a performance from the Lakers here in game six in a, a dominant a quarter as you will find in an NBA Finals game. Guys, that was a defensive clinic. It was absolutely unbelievable, and, and it, it was started by Anthony Davis and his presence all throughout the possessions. Yeah, I think it started with him moving to the five, inserting Caruso, and now look at Anthony Davis patrolling the paint against Adebayo. One great play after another. There is somewhere the great Bill Russell is watching this, the greatest defensive player that's ever played this game, saying that is masterful. It is. I mean, look how he's blocking shots, altering shots, and saying... In his own special way, it's over. Well, we have we have seen two masterpieces from Jimmy Butler on the Heat side. We have seen now two defensive gems from Anthony Davis. He was sensational defensively in game four and is even better here in game six. Now, we still have a whole half to play. Guys, if you're coaching the Miami Heat and you just got lambasted, what do you tell your team at halftime in terms of mindset coming into this third quarter? To me, this game is far from over. Give them credit, they played exceptionally well, but we had something to do with it. We have been competitive all year long. If we're gonna go down, let's go down fighting and throwing haymakers. Well, this team knows nothing but fighting. That's the way they've been throughout this bubble. And as Duncan Robinson launches a three, that won't go. The biggest comeback in NBA Finals history, the Celtics did it against the Lakers in 2008. That was game four. As the Celtics were down 24 points in the first half, came back and won that game against the Lakers as we sent it down to Rachel. Well, Mike, the coaching staff of the Heat tells me they didn't do a lot of yelling at the team at halftime. They really wanted to focus on what they call solution-based discussions, and that had a lot to do with their offense. Too much one on five out there, they told the players, more sharing the ball. And also, and coaches, you guys both know this, Jeff and Mark, you've been there, telling the guys, Take it a play at a time. You don't have to go and make up the entire deficit right in there in the first few minutes. Just go out there and do, he said, what we know how to do, Mike. Thank you, Rachel. They'll try and overcome the second largest halftime deficit in finals history. The first one was the Memorial Day Massacre back in 85. The Lakers were on the other end of that one as the Celtics crushed them, although the Lakers didn't win the series. The coach, if you're Eric closer, what are you saying to your team at halftime? Well, again... It, it's it, you can't this is not the time to some, pull out some motivational speech it's not that right now Anthony Davis has dominated the paint they have nothing in there 
They need more skill and shooting on the floor. Caruso with the steal. Caruso got the start. Doesn't have big numbers. As James drives, gets inside, layup, banks it home, and a foul. But Caruso's had a real impact, Jeff. Well, Frank Vogel made a difficult decision on do we start big or go with Davis at the five? Who to insert if we are going to make that change? He picked right. So many moves are dissected and second-guessed. The only thing that works is to be right. He was more than right. Duncan Robinson trying to get free, gets it a bam out of bio. Blocked with a foul. Davis called for his third personal. He thought he had his third block. Well, if the Heat make the greatest comeback, or one of the greatest comebacks in finals history, there'll be a game seven Tuesday. That would be on ABC. Uh, right now, down by 30. It's just over 90 seconds gone by here in the third quarter. And the Heat, again, 88% shooting from the free throw line in the first five games. They're five for 13 from the line. Adebayo playing in his third straight after missing those two. And has had a tough go of it against Anthony Davis. James has had another very efficient game scoring. Six of nine from the field after that brilliant game five. Caruso on the drive. Scoots inside. Layup won't go. Bam out of bio the rebound. The Heat have 37 points and we play 26 minutes. Hero not even close. Davis another rebound. James taking his time. Eight on the 24. James goes down a lane, kicks it out. Davis. Davis fakes. Back up top. Danny Green, an open look. That's good. Danny Green from downtown. Eric Spolstra furious. He thought James charged into one of the Heat players after making that pass. The lead is now up to 32 as Crowder can't hit. Adebayo couldn't quite hang on. Ball goes out of bounds. And you see what Anthony Davis is doing defensively. He stays connected. Normally that's a lob to Bam. He stays connected to Bam, not allowing the lob pass, forcing Hero to shoot an air ball floater. They have taken the fight away from this Heat team, coach, which is shocking to me. I thought that they, whether they win or not is not the issue, but I thought there's no way they're going to take the fight away from them. Yeah, it's, when you get hit, as Mike said, with such a haymaker as they call a charge this time down on Caruso, when you get hit with that haymaker, it's hard. And I just want to see the Heat finish this game up where they can feel not good about the result, obviously, but that they didn't fold. Well, they've had a number of comebacks as Butler dribbles it out of bounds, a number of comebacks throughout the playoffs, but not anything like this. Not down 32 against a Laker team that is just playing as smothering a defense as you can possibly have. Danny Green tries again. That one misses. Out of bio, the rebound. Lakers are shooting 52% from the field, and then a, this complete miscommunication stopped defensively there. It was out of bio, able to slam it home. He's very good at that, where he starts on the dribble handoff, and instead of handing it off, keeps it. And there he got the dunk. Caldwell Polk, sloppy pass. Davis gets it. Throws it up to the rim, trying to get a foul. And a loose ball foul. It's going to go against Caldwell Pope. The Heat have almost as many turnovers as they do field goals. 12 turnovers, 14 field goals. So a reminder, each game, one lucky fan can win beer for a year. If either team reaches 95 points, tweet hashtag ultra beer bonus and hashtag sweepstakes at Michelob Ultra for a chance to win. Laker fans feeling good right now. 
A total domination so far here in game six. Tyler Hero, the floater, in and out. Rebound goes to Danny Green. Hero just one for eight from the field tonight. James drives, James finishes. And the Lakers just keep pouring it on. Butler from mid-range. James another rebound, that's his 10th board. And just keeps pushing the pace. James has Duncan Robinson on him, kicks it out. Caruso, corner three. Ball poked out of bounds. He's just too good in transition with gaps like that, the power, the athleticism, the grace, and the skill. Well, he said before game four, it was one of the biggest games of his career. He didn't want to see the series go 2-2. They won that one to go up three games to one. And this one had to be even bigger than that with the Heat coming in with an opportunity to tie and force a game seven. And as Bam out of bio knocks down the jumper. I'm just amazed and continue to be amazed at LeBron James and how great he is as a basketball player. Truly a winner. Where are the people that said that he came to L.A. to close out his career and put together some TV stuff and career stuff off the floor? This guy is far from finished. And Abayo gets inside, throws it up, draws the foul. Davis just picked up his fourth foul. He's not happy at all. We'll take a timeout. 6.38 remaining here in the third. Lakers in complete control. Diabolical games put on our future kings. And our Rewrited broadcast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA. Well, LeBron James has changed teams three times. Back in 2010, the decision going from Cleveland to Miami. And with the Heat, four straight finals, back-to-back -back titles in 2012 and 2013. And then a return to Cleveland where he fulfilled the promise to bring a title to that city and won it with the Cavs. And now in 2018, joining the Lakers. Missed the playoffs last year after his injury, but advanced to the finals with just three losses in the first three rounds and have had their hands full with the Miami Heat, but they have completely dominated them in game six with 6.38 remaining here in the third quarter. A 71-43 to lead. And guys, this is his 260th playoff game tonight. That's the most all-time, just past Derek Fisher. That's over three full regular seasons. 3.2 regular seasons. And tonight is his 55th NBA Finals game. Just staggering numbers. It's been an unbelievable run, and it's still plenty left in the tank. I said it before, and I'll say it again. When it's over with, he'll be the all-time leading scorer in the history of the game. A top five assist man in the history of the game, in my opinion, will have the greatest professional career in the history of basketball. Jimmy Butler with the foul. James getting a rush right now. Tonight he's got 15 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists. And getting off the bench, he's going to come back in. As we approach the midway point of the third, Danny Green, high off the glass, bounces around and drops through. Danny Green, eight points. Talking about players trying to win their third championship with three different teams. Green's in that category as well. Hoping that comes to fruition tonight. Anthony Davis, another rebound. All knocked out of bounds. And it's going to be heat ball. James returns. And Caruso sits down. You know the awesome thing about being around greatness, Coach? You're well aware of it. You can go along for the ride. Play your role, go along for the ride, and greatness will put you in position to be called the champion, which is not an insult. It's a credit to greatness. Right. It's just a, sometimes you're fortunate to be in, in the right place at the right time, and that's why I think you have to be very careful of diminishing people's careers when they haven't won championships because, again, Sometimes you're just at the wrong place at the wrong time against the wrong opponent as a beautiful pass by James to Caldwell Pope. 
and it was goaltended. Well, this week's Monday Night Football matchup as the Chargers in New Orleans to take on the Saints. Kickoff on ESPN will be shortly after 8 Eastern. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Do you think Frank Vogel popped some champagne at halftime? <laughs> no, I, there's no. I think no. he took a sip. <laughs> he deserves it. I mean, he made a hard choice. He made the right choice. He took on a very difficult job. He's got such humility as James loses Robinson. But I, both these coaches really set such a standard of excellence as coaches and the humility in which they go about their business. They have so much respect for each other. They faced each other in big moments before as Kuzma lays it up and in. That's when Frank Vogel is G. Buss looking forward to celebrating. Vogel was the head coach of Indiana when they went to the conference finals two years in a row against LeBron James and the Heat and lost both of those. Hold on, I got to press rewind. He did not take on a very difficult job. He, yes, took he, on, he took on a job to give him a chance to win a championship and they finish it off, which it looks likely that they will. He did the job, but coaching LeBron James and coaching greatness, you win in this league with talent. It put him in position. I don't think those two guys are exceptionally talented. I mean, like you always say, like top five, but it's, it's not like everybody else is overwhelmingly talented on their roster. He has done a magnificent job. That's not. He hasn't just done a job. He's done a magnificent job. That's not the argument. It hasn't been a difficult job to do. He's done a great job. Both things can be true. It's difficult working with you sometimes. I'm more true. <laughs> <laughs> Provided by Goodyear, helping you discover the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Lakers driven to wrap this championship up tonight with 4-10 remaining here in the third. Anthony Davis and the Lakers dominating. He's been incredible. Controlling the paint and being an absolute monster defensively. Yeah, I mean, it's just not just his block shots. It's his stunting at the ball, challenging, altering, and then finishing off with defensive rebounds. Lauren Dragic getting a chance to play. And after missing the past four games, he's played just nine minutes. Just wanted to get back on the floor with his team. But it has been a nightmare performance from the Miami Heat. Now 13 turnovers. Shooting 33% from the field, missed eight free throws, just everything has gone wrong. But so much that that has to do with is this defensive clinic that the Lakers have put on. Absolutely. They've been a great defensive team all year. That's where they've hung their hat on. They've hung their hat on LeBron James, Anthony Davis, defense, and then timely performances by others. And you make a great point because as great as Anthony Davis has been this ball game in this ballgame, as Ronald knocks down another jumper. He can play that same defense, and if the four other guys are not tied to him, it can be useless. The lead has ballooned to 36. How about the game Rondo's had? 16 points, 7 of 8 from the field as Crowder puts it up and in. Rondo's even hit a couple of three-pointers. By the way, James now just a couple of assists away from yet another finals triple-double. A routine in many ways. Rondo pass inside, knocked away by Dragic. But you're right, Rondo has been up exceptional in this ball game people say playoff rondo the way he started this game it was layup rondo crowder draws the foul on kuzma and jay crowder will go to the line well these free throws are presented by youtube tv with 85 plus live channels personalized recommendations and unlimited dvr youtube tv is tv made yours try it free Jay Crowder to the line. Crowder has been to the playoffs the last seven years with four different teams. He's one of those players that all coaches, they love to have Jay Crowder types. Plays hard defensively, can shoot the three, and just helps teams win. And he's had some good moments during these playoffs. Tonight, Crowder with 11 points and four rebounds. It was an excellent pickup from the Heat back in February, that trade. They, of course, Andre Godala was the headliner in that trade, but Crowder had just as much of an impact. 
32 point lead for the Lakers as you come up on two and a half remaining here in the third. Rajon Rondo, what a bounce back game he's had. James steps back, three pointer won't go, Dragic grabs it. Lakers have shot poorly from three point line, but it certainly doesn't matter with what they've done at the other end as Dragic floats it up and in. Second field goal for Dragic. Tyler here, you saw them on the bench. Really struggled tonight. One of eight from the field. And a foul's going to go, I believe, against Crowder. That should be number four. For the Heat, their second team foul. Make that the third team foul. Caruso comes in. Caldwell Pope will sit down. Caruso getting that start, his first NBA playoff start. The third year guard. And he responded with his usual great spirit and defense. Back he, to James. James goes inside the flush and the foul. And going back to Caruso, Mike, after that spectacular drive and finish by James. Caruso's an energy giver, not an energy drainer. He's not eye rolling coaches about starting shots if he gets taken out he guards hard he rebounds hard he cuts hard and he's very selfless with the ball we're gonna, we'll wave that off a lane violation on kuzma i haven't seen that called all playoffs i like when things you, you wait to the very end to pull something out <laughs> good <laughs> why not about to play the pass and LeBron James about to win another title. Mama, there goes that man. Those two have had a, a terrific connection on the floor all season. James is one of Caruso's biggest fans as Butler goes in. And Jimmy Butler, who has been, to say the least, sensational. 10 points, 7 to 6, 6 rebounds. You wondered after how much he put into that game 5 victory would he have and the Lakers quickly shot him down and shot the heat down in this one. Minute and a half left in the third. James, three-pointer misses, rebound Dragic. Duncan Robinson could not get going either, just two of six from the field. After that fantastic performance in game five, got that three-pointer to go, his third three-pointer, and it's 84-57. Fifty seven points now in thirty five plus minutes. This is a heat team that is a very good offensive team. Rondo again. Rajon Rondo. Eight of nine from the field. Nineteen points off the bench. Rondo kept saying he wanted to be. It was a goal for him as Dragic can't connect the goal for Rajon Rondo to win a championship for the two most storied franchise in NBA history the Celtics and the Lakers he's very close now he's been huge he's been absolutely huge in this ball game and coming into the finals he was shooting the three ball so well hasn't shot it as well here in the finals but prior to that Knocked down a lot of open looks. Look at those numbers here off the bench. He has the most assists off the bench in a single playoff season in NBA history since they started charting assists back in 70-71. And remember, he missed the first five games of the playoffs. And he's still out there coaching. Doesn't stop talking, communicates. I'm sure as a teammate or as a coach, sometimes it's irritating you want to say shut up but the guy is a winner and he is engaged and he keeps guys you know holds the guys accountable on the floor the only thing i always say like, we talk about accountability a lot and it's become a buzzword it's become a cliche as caruso tried to for the exclamation point holding others is accountable if you don't mind being held accountable and you hold yourself accountable.
But accountability, like most things, isn't a one-way street. Oh, Wittick, and the third quarter comes to an end. The Los Angeles Lakers are 12 minutes away from another championship. 87-58, a domination here in game six as this presentation of the NBA Finals will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Making Buckets is brought to you by KFC. We're, we're in the midst of a defensive masterpiece. Okay, we got to keep it going. Okay. Chase those dudes. No threes for those dudes. No fouls. Keep them off the free throw line. Everybody rebound. Everybody in rebound. A mob on three. One, two, three. Finals presented by YouTube TV. The Miami Heat offense again, talented, because not only Jimmy Butler leading the way, but six others in double figures here in the finals. But tonight, completely steamrolled by this defensive clinic put on by the Lakers. And a fourth quarter underway, 87 to 58. The Heat with that magnificent game five victory, surviving at the end to hold on. And the Lakers talk about the ultimate response to a tough playoff loss. Dragic trips up a little bit, gets it to Adebayo. And Kelly Olenek backs down a three. Olenek who had some good moments earlier in the series when Adebayo got hurt. And then kind of out of the rotation last couple of games. Markeith Morris. Jumper won't go, the tip misses, Dragic has it. Warren Dragic is going to be a free agent this offseason. Beautiful pass to Adebayo. Those two have been doing that all throughout these playoffs. And certainly the Heat sorely missed Dragic during that four-game stretch. As the lead is cut to 24. Rondo to Morris. Danny Green's pass deflected, knocked out of bounds. And it's still going to be Laker ball eight to shoot as Anthony Davis returns. And we give credit to Caruso. Frank Vogel and certain Caruso in the job he's done all night long. But sometimes I don't want to leave Anthony Davis out. You got to be uncomfortable to be a champion. Here's a guy that wanted to play the five position for his whole life out of four, refused to play the five. It made this team champion by inserting him as the five. He was willing to sacrifice, willing to be uncomfortable, and has put on a dominant performance. Well, they have had often their best moments as a team when he's out at the five. And as you said, Mark, he's excelled. Second in the NBA in Defensive Player of the Year voting. And Tedekupo won it. Shot blocked by Adebayo. Nice rejection. And a 24-second violation. Excellent play from Bam Adebayo. As crazy as it sounds, Coach, there's still a lot of time left in this ballgame. If you're the Los Angeles Stop. Lakers, don't, Stop. don't take your foot off the gas. No, you're right about that. But there's not a lot of time left. Did you just give me the hand? Yeah, I said stop. <laughs> he did. Right, yeah. right through the plexiglass. <laughs> Dragic gets inside. Layup on go. Rebound LeBron James. James leading the charge down the other end. Pass finds its way to Rondo. Rajon Rondo, 19 points on 8 of 9 from the field. Gets in the paint. Scoop layup is up. That won't go. Adebayo barrels into Kuzma and a blocking foul called on Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma picks up his third. And Adebayo will shoot free throws with 9.35 remaining. Adebayo's played 35 minutes tonight. 17 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. Only 23 years old. It has been a magnificent year for him. He made his first All-Star team. Made all NBA defense selection. 
And then coming into the finals, as we mentioned, he was the best player in the Eastern Conference Finals. His Game 6 clinching victory against the Celtics was one of the top performances from the Heat in these playoffs. And then the, the injury in Game 1 really marred his finals experience. But he is... He's going to be a big-time player for a long, long time. And sometimes in this league, clearly, we're both familiar with it, you have to go through the process. You have to lose and have frustrated nights in order to develop and understand the adjustments that you have to make individually and collectively. Danny Green knocks down a three. It's so good to see. There's Green in double figures, 11 points. That's his third three-pointer. Lead back up to 25. Dragic, Butler, and Hero. Hero throws it up and in. James setting it up. He has run the show with precision tonight. Kyle Kuzma tried the dunk. He thought he got hit. So did Frank Vogel as the Heat come the other way. Bam out of bio, short jumper is good. And Frank Vogel calls timeout. A 36 point lead has been cut to 21 with 8.37 remaining. A little anxious look on the face of Coach Vogel. Little handoff, and Bam does a good job of rolling. The delivery on point, steps in rhythm. Blake is calling a timeout. Want to close this thing out. This lot of my we premieres next Sunday on ABC. And here was the recent huddle of the Miami Heat, Jeff. This is every huddle with Miami. There's no one straggling away. This is when they're down and getting blown out in a finals game to end their season. They are together. Eric Spolstra talked about a picture of Jimmy Butler being a champion before he was a champion. To me, that's a championship team before they're a championship team. I just love the way they conduct their business. Totally agree. Well, they have been just exceptional here in the postseason. Green shot won't go. Davis on the tip. They open up their playoffs. They swept the Indiana Pacers, then knocked off the Milwaukee Bucks, the team that had the best record in the NBA in the regular season in five games. Hard fought series against the Celtics, but they knocked them off in six games. And here after falling behind 0-2 in this series, losing two of their best players and two starters to injury in game one. Got it to 3-2 as Olenek shot won't go Davis the rebound. And so the Lakers put on this spectacular defensive show here in game six. Davis throws it up, shot won't go but a foul. And he'll shoot free throws. Uh, Eric Spolstra. This is his, sometimes it, it's hard to believe. It's already his 12th year as a head coach, but it's his 25th year with the Heat. And as we've talked about, he began as a video coordinator. He started loving the NBA when he was a, a little kid. His dad, an NBA executive with Portland, with Denver, with Buffalo, with New Jersey. And then he goes to Miami and connects with Pat Riley. And that has been a fantastic partnership for a long time. Coach, you rave about it. It's how an organization should be ran, and they do an incredible job. And you go so far as to say, is how long you think Eric Spolstra is going to be there? Well, I think, what, how old is he, Mike? Like 45, 6, something like that? I, he's been with them 25 years. I think he could easily be with them another 25 years because of their organizational stability. Everybody says, be like the Heat. Be like the Spurs. Be like the Jazz. And then they do nothing like those teams. You know, when there are down times in Miami, they don't blame the coach. They haven't made the playoffs three of the last five years. He was never in trouble. Out of bio, misses a 24-second violation. By the way, he's going to be 50 in November. He, he looks Man, about 10 years. Should, that should not be allowed. He looks too good. Have you seen the mirror lately? Yeah, that's true. Oh, don't look so down on yourself. Looking man. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma. Cannot connect. Fight inside. Davis turns. Comes up short. Out of bio. The rebound. As we're approaching the midway point.
Good defense from Caldwell Pope. You're talking about heroes. Problem offensively. Part of that to do with the defense against him. Caldwell Pope has been terrific defensively as Olenek flips it back up and in. Not just defensively, but has made timely shots during the course of these playoffs. A guy that last year, Laker Nation, was frustrated with his play. And at times this year, upset. He actually was booed early in the season in L.A. Had a slow start to the year. Had a slow start to the playoffs. The very first playoff game, he was 0 for 9 from the field against Portland. And he has turned in some excellent performances, as Mark said, on both ends here in these NBA Finals, especially the last several games. Guy who, prior to this year, his first six years, he only went to the playoffs once. That's with, with the Pistons. They got swept by LeBron James back in 2016 as the Cavaliers were on their way to a title. Now he's his teammate on the verge of a title with LeBron James. And a 24-second violation as we pass the midway point. James still out there. 19 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists. His 11th triple-double in the finals. Out of Iowa inside, bounces around and drops in. And a really nice look by Duncan Robinson, who is, from the start of the bubble to the end, he's improved defensively, he's improved as a passer as he draws more attention. LeBron James putting on the finishing touches as he knocks down the three-pointer. There's a run to five and a half remaining. Hero inside, bam, out of bio, throws it up and in. Out of bio putting up big numbers in a blowout loss. 25 points and nine rebounds. This is going to be a painful way for the Heat season to come to an end. And for a franchise with three championship teams, this is going to be one of those teams that the fans remember for a long, long time, despite the fact that they fell short of their goal. Caldwell Pope can't connect. Out of bio pulls down another rebound. And James throws it too far ahead. Davis can't get it and throws it out of bounds. That's total triple doubles in the playoffs. And as we mentioned, 11 just in the finals alone. Jason Kidd now the assistant coach. Won his title back in 2011 with the Dallas Mavericks. And LeBron James on the verge of his fourth NBA championship with his third different team. Duncan Robinson looking for an open teammate. Well, Linux not going to get it off in time and a 24 second violation. You know the expectations as we got a timeout always so high in Los Angeles after a six-year drought of even making the playoffs, they're on the verge of a championship. The NBA Finals on ABC is... The Lakers with a rich history in the NBA Finals, led by iconic duos Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, teamed up late in their careers, four finals, winning the title in 72, then Kareem and Magic, five championships and eight final trip together. And then, of course, Shaq and Kobe winning three straight NBA championships to start the new millennium. And now LeBron James and Anthony Davis look to join those duos with the title on the verge of the first in their very first season together. As we hit the four-minute mark, LeBron James throws it down. Again, they... They had a six-year drought of not making the playoffs. Haven't won a title in 10 years. Now, for a lot of teams, that's business as usual. But not the Lakers. They have spoiled their fans. And with Anthony Davis arriving, a technical foul call on LeBron James. If you can jump that high, I think you should be able to slap the backboard. And I want to go back to that graphic, and I'm not nitpicking, but when you talk about Laker great duels winning the championship, I think after Shaq and Kobe, you can add... Kobe and Pau Gasol. You're correct. They won titles in 2009, 2010. 
But this one was this was not an easy championship, even though the ex expectations were high. With all that went on during the course of the year, starting back in the preseason with that geopolitical fallout in China, then the death of David Stern, the death of Kobe Bryant, the suspension of the season, the pandemic, and then you throw in the basketball part with the West was loaded with the Clippers and the Nuggets and the Rockets. Even the eight-seeded Blazers were picked by some to upset the Lakers in the first round. Well, if you're talking top to bottom, they are the champions, but they are not the most talented team in the league. But give them credit. They fought adversity, defended a high level, they embraced their role and great leadership and the job done by Frank Vogel and the rest of the Cavs. They're going to finish the playoffs 16 and 5. They beat Portland, Houston and Denver all in five games. And there's LeBron James ready to celebrate and they'll vanquish Miami here in six games as we approach three minutes remaining. Two great stars, excellent coaching. Rob Palenka, who acquired Anthony Davis and several others both before and during the season. It just all came together. And it's in such an environment where there are no fans as Duncan Robinson misses a three. You know, it's just such a, a different way for them to celebrate and to play the game. I think the game has been played at an incredibly high level from start to finish here in the bubble. Joe, I, I think you're so right, Jeff. The, the challenge of this bubble cannot be overstated. As we're under three minutes remaining, they are ready to celebrate Los Angeles and certainly here in the bubble with the Laker people. As Tyler Hero knocks down the three. Well, Mike, you're right. The challenges of the bubble, not just on the court, but to me, even more so off the court. And this one has to be so satisfying for LeBron James. He missed the playoffs last year because of the injury during the season. Lakers did not make it. There was talk about other players surpassing him as the best player in basketball. He hadn't missed the playoffs in 14 years. Came back. They have the best record in the West as Jimmy Butler's season is over. And what a magnificent playoff performance from Butler. Two legendary NBA Finals games. James wants to finish off with a three. Instead, he'll go inside, lay it up and in. As we hit two minutes remaining here in game six. If I'm Frank Vogel, I'm taking LeBron James and Anthony Davis out of this ball game now. Take a bow. Well deserved, champs. Olenek throws it up and in. Some substitutions ready to come in. Just throw the ball out of bounds to get him out. Says the guy who preaches play the right way. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just don't want a timeout, a, a needless timeout. Kendrick Nunn knocks down the three. And now Frank Vogel calls a timeout. LeBron James will come out of the game. This year he had a new coach, he had a new co-star. The rough and rugged Western Conference, an emotional roller coaster this season. And LeBron James caps off his 17th year with a triple-double in an NBA championship clincher. 28 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists. The Lakers 127 away from the title. The smiles and the emotion all over the Lakers' faces. Quinn Cook, who won a championship with the Golden State Warriors, now here in L.A. with a hug for the leader of the Lakers. And Rajon Rondo, so instrumental in the playoffs, coming off the bench. An elite performance here in Game 6. You guys always talk about all the hard work from starts back in training camp. A training camp that was over a year ago that began in what has been the longest season in NBA history. No, but I want to take a moment. A tough year in L.A. They win the championship. I just want to shout out Vanessa Bryant and the Bryant girls. Thankful for your husband's example, his leadership, his guidance.
This team, the Laker teams as champion, leaves their huddle and says one, two, three, Mamba. I just hope that this puts a smile on their face. Understanding the impact. Thank you. You know, Mark, it's, it's going to be a wonderful celebration for the Laker fans. But as you mentioned, the last time they all came together was back in January. And it was in profound sadness with the loss of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and those seven others. But tonight, the Laker fans can unite in joy as they celebrate a title. Under a minute remaining. And what a way to close out this championship season. As you see, Davis and James, it's all coming out. You know, one of the, to me, one of the great pleasures of this job every year is watching they become little kids again when that title is realized, when it's finally over, and all the work, all the sweat, all the practices, all the travel. And in this case, all this time in the bubble ends up with what they all set out for as their number one and only goal. You know what? Each guy invested. And LeBron is thinking, I promised this guy this. I told him that things would be different. And to finish it off, they all should be extremely proud. Well, Lennox puts it up at him. Caruso will bring it up. LeBron James already celebrating. I'm sure they are back in Los Angeles again. That's why now it knocks down a three-pointer. There's the exclamation point. And the Heat will just bring it up. And the Lakers will win game six. And now Cook can just dribble it out. And J.R. Smith already shirtless. <laughs> Final seconds here in this NBA season. The respect from those two. And that's it. It's over. This historic 2020 NBA championship belongs to the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers conquer the bubble, and banner number 17 will soon hang in the rafters. Such an emotional time for these L.A. Lakers and also emotional for Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. And as we said, a painful way for a great season to come to an end. Always so inspiring when an individual or a team overachieves or accomplishes the unexpected. That's what the Heat did. But they ran up against a Laker team that defensively just steamrolled them here tonight. So much more ahead in the celebration, the trophy presentation, the naming of the finals MVP. It's all ahead as the Lakers win the 2020 championship. Back here in the NBA bubble. As the Los Angeles Lakers over on the heat here in game six, the Larry O'Brien trophy will be presented to the 2020 NBA Finals champion Lakers. A celebration just underway. He's won now with the Miami Heat, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Los Angeles Lakers. As has his teammate Danny Green, also his third championship with three different teams. And Rajon Rondo winning his second NBA title. The Celtics in 08, the Lakers in 2020. Right now, let's get things started. 
As they're going to bring the best folk Louis Vuitton trophy travel case, PA announcer Kyle Speller. Joining us now at center court with a special presentation, please welcome ESPN's Rachel Nichols. Thank you so much. I am just thrilled to say that we are now joined by the Lakers' Jeannie Buss and here to present the Larry O'Brien Trophy, Commissioner Adam Silver. Thank you, Rachel. This season restart was always about something bigger than basketball. It was about resilience and ingenuity, but it was also about racial equality and social justice. Working together, teams and players, we found a way to play through a pandemic, keep everyone safe, and put a spotlight on these critically important issues. For that, every team deserves to be celebrated. And a special thank you to Disney and the 6,500 people who worked on this campus. The basketball here in Orlando has been intense. Congratulations to the Miami Heat, our Eastern Conference champions. And after three months, one team has emerged victorious. The Los Angeles Lakers are the NBA's 2000 1920 champions. Congratulations to Jeannie Buss, the Buss family, Rob Palinka, Coach Vogel, the whole Laker organization, and of course this incredible team. This Larry O'Brien trophy, and I believe this suitcase, are yours. You guys, come take the trophy. <laughs> Jeannie, it has been a decade of ups and downs to get to this moment right here with these guys. What does it mean to you to win it this year of all years with everything that's happened? Well, first I want to thank Adam Silver and all the workers that made it possible for us to finish out this season. I. Um, especially would like to thank all the teams that made it to the bubble to make this all possible. Shout out to the Portland Trail Blazers, the Houston Rockets, the Denver Nuggets, and the Miami Heat for the honor and privilege of sharing this court with them. On behalf of the Laker organization, Rob Palenka, thank you. Coach Vogel, the coaching staff, the training staff, all our employees back home in Los Angeles for your tireless work in making this happen. And to you, Lakers team, I am so proud of you both on and off the court. You've done uh, Los Angeles proud with your hard work, your professionalism, and your dedication. And I, you have written your own inspiring chapter in the great Laker history. And to Laker Nation, we have been through a, a heartbreaking tragedy with the loss of our beloved Kobe Bryant and Gianna. Let this trophy serve as a reminder of when we come together, believe in each other, incredible things can happen. Laker Nation, when it's safe, I look forward to celebrating with you. Until then, I will bring back the trophy to Los Angeles where it belongs. Jeannie, thank you so much. Frank Vogel, please come up and join us. Frank, when you think about all the questions about this team at the start of this year, how would you describe the journey to get from there to this moment? Well, we have a, we have a PhD in adversity, I can tell you that much. Uh, we've been through a lot, but I'm so damn proud of this team! Yeah. World champions! Yeah. <laughs> credit, credit to this group right here, this group of players, for buy, buying into being a team first team, Committed to the defensive end. You became a defensive monster. You saw that tonight. My coaching staff, we've had fun since day one. We had fun together with this whole process. RP, thanks for the opportunity, collaboration, togetherness. 
Jeannie and the Bus family, we love you guys. Laker Nation, we did it! Frank, I have heard you say you weren't the most obvious choice to coach this team, but you were clearly the right coach for this team. Why were you such a perfect fit and voice for these guys? Just uh, I'm the guy that's going to focus on the work, you know, and that's what this group needed. We had, we had the talent, you know, we just wanted to focus on the work, tie all the strings together, make sure we all play together, and we got it done. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. Now let's hand things back over to Commissioner Silver to present the 2020 Bill Russell MVP Trophy. Of course, the finals MVP Trophy, as you just said, is named after Bill Russell who has been with us every year for the finals, but of course couldn't be in the bubble this year, but I know is watching at home. And I have a feeling that this finals MVP is gonna have a trophy named after him one day. The finals MVP is LeBron James. right Lakers fans quote don't give a damn about what you've done before when you become a Laker you've got to do it with them as well well you have done it LeBron what does it mean to you uh, it means a lot it means a lot to represent this franchise um, Jeannie I told Jeannie when I came here that uh, I was gonna put this franchise back in a position where it belongs um, her late great father did it for so many years and she just you know took it on after that and for me to be a part of such a historical franchise is uh, it's an unbelievable feeling, not only for myself, but for my teammates, for the organization, for the coaches, for the trainers, everybody that's here. Um, we just want our respect. Rob wants his respect. <laughs> Coach Vogel wants his respect. Our organization wants their respect. Laker Nation wants their respect. And I want my damn respect, too. <laughs> LeBron, I'm going to tell you, four finals MVPs, your fourth title with three franchises, extremely elite company, and in year 17 as well. you got a guy in your ear right now telling you're the greatest of all time. You're just a couple months shy of your 36th birthday. Yeah. Is this the longest crime in the history of professional sports? I don't know. I'm going to let you guys talk about it. Um, one thing I can do is uh, commit to the game. Um, I put myself and my body and my mind in position to be available to my teammates. Um, I've never missed a playoff game in my career. And uh, the best thing you can do for your teammates is be available. And uh, for me to be available to my teammates and put in the work, um, I just hope I make my guys proud. And, and that's all that matter to me. I make my guys proud, make the fan base proud, my family back home. I can't wait to get back home to them. Akron, Ohio, we did it again. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. You have had an incredibly close partnership with the guy over there to your left. What can you say about the way you two work together to get this trophy here tonight? I mean, it's easy. It's easy. Um, I said it in the presser uh, before. We have no ego. Um, we want the best from each other every single day, both in off the floor, on and off the floor. And I know what it means to have seven years uh, where you feel like um, that you can't get over the hump. You know, I had seven years my first stint in Cleveland. I felt like I couldn't get over the hump. I felt like I needed some help. I felt like I need someone to push me. And that's when I was able to go to Miami and get pushed by D. Wade and Bosch in that franchise. And so to be able to get him and we push him and let him know how great he is, but just making him see better basketball and better to be a part of something that's special, that's what it's all about. So to be able to put him where he is today, I, I, that means so much to me, and the fact that he trusts me uh, means even more. 
you were very vocal coming in here that you weren't just trying to win a title in this bubble, but you wanted to be a real voice for social change in what has been one of the most turbulent years in American history. When you look back about what the entire NBA Brotherhood did in this bubble, what will you think of? Uh, it's been unbelievable. It's been unbelievable. We didn't know. It was an unknown. Um, but I think Adam, I think everybody from the NBA to MBPA putting this thing together, um, you know, and us using our voices, us using being together. You know, you, you hear Golden State always use the phrase strength in numbers. And that's exactly what it was while we were here as, a, as the NBA, as the MBPA, all our players, everybody had a voice on what's going on in America. So um, we know we, want to see, we all want to see better days. Um, and when we leave here, we got to continue to push that. Uh, continue to push uh, social injustice, continue to push for voter suppression, continue to push for police brutality, continue to push for everything that's the opposite of love. And I think if we could continue to do that, all of us, um, America would be a, a much better place, which we all love this, this country. LeBron, thank you so much for pushing against all of those things. Congratulations thank you. on that trophy in your hand. Appreciate it. And your fourth NBA title. What that big Let's bring up Anthony Davis, please. Big boy there. AD, your first NBA Finals, your first title, when you imagined, when you were growing up back on the playgrounds of Chicago, this moment, how does the reality stack up with the dream? You can't even put it into words. To be out here and grind with these guys for a full 12 months, you know, been through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of arguments, a lot of tough moments. And to hear that horn go off and, and we NBA champions, uh, it's just a real feeling. I'm just happy it's with these guys. Oh. You told me for years when you couldn't get into the playoffs sometimes in New Orleans, all you wanted was the chance to test yourself, to be there at the end when the competition was highest. What you were able to do, especially defensively during this finals, what did you learn about yourself? You got to compete. It's tough. It's tough on the body. Um, it's a lot of hard work, but these guys push me every day. Um, especially Bron and, and, and Doe. You know, they always on me about being great, being better, you know, covering up every mistake. It's my job. And to, <laughs> and to be able to, uh, you know, win it and, and grind and see how tough it is and see this feeling and want this feeling again. You know, that's what it's about, to get this feeling <laughs> and want this feeling again. And like I said, I'm happy with these guys, man. We've been through a lot, man, to ups and downs, start from the beginning of the season. And, He's trying We're to champions. give you something over there. We're here. I love these guys. Anthony. Anthony, you became teammates with Kobe Bryant back in the 2012 Olympics. He was a big brother to you for the rest of your time through New Orleans and then coming to here. I know that you have been thinking of him. You told me before the NBA Finals, I cannot let him down. Anthony, you did not let him down. What we does it mean to you we to have done that? You know, ever since the trage tragedy, you know, all we wanted to do was is do it for him, and we didn't let him down. Um, it would have been great to do it, you know, last game in his jerseys, but, you know, it made us come out even more aggressive, even more powerful on both ends of the floor to make sure we close it out tonight. And, I know he's looking down on us, proud of us. Um, I know, you know, Vanessa's proud of us. The organization's proud of us. Um, you know, it, it means a lot to us. And, you know, it's a tough moment, man. you want from me? What do you got? Say you like that. He was a, he was a I like that. I like that. He like that. He like that. He like that. He was a, uh, he was a big brother to all of us, and you know, we, we, we did this for him. Before I let you go, I do want to ask you about your dad, who told you that he would quarantine as long as it took to be here for this moment. And in fact, of course, he did. Um, yeah, he's, he's one of my biggest supporters. I mean, he he said he'd quarantine 30 days just to be right here in this moment. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's always texting me before games. You know, telling me to go get it. You know, he, he's my biggest critic, my biggest supporter. Um, I know he's proud of me. You know, he, he was in with me from the beginning of my career. You know, waiting for this moment. Both of us waiting for this moment. And it's here. 
So he ain't crying right now, but I know he's gonna be crying in a minute. Hey, <laughs> he gonna cry when he get in the car. He gonna cry when he get in the car. So um, I know he's proud of me. And love you, pops. So. Congratulations to him, to you, to all the families, to all the parents, the spouses, the children that sacrificed, especially this year, to be with you guys in this moment. And congratulations to the right, 2020 D champion, pop these, pop. Los Angeles Lakers. They're tearing the house down already. Back up to you, Mike. Thank you, Rachel. Well, it's, it's just so fun to watch the sheer joy on the faces of the players and the coaches. And there's a lot of dreams come true with another championship crown. It'll be their final night in the bubble. It's going to be a long, long night as they'll celebrate well into the morning before heading back to Los Angeles. Much more to come as the Los Angeles Lakers win their 17th title in franchise history. We'll be back after this timeout. The first two titles happened in Miami as LeBron James winning in 2012 and 2013 with the Heat both times finals MVP. Then the return to Cleveland, ending the drought in that city, his hometown in 2016, also finals MVP. And in his second year with the LA Lakers, in unprecedented circumstances in the bubble, the bond that will be formed with these will last a lifetime. LeBron James wins his fourth title, wins his fourth finals MVP, and he does it with his new star teammate, Anthony Davis. Always emotional, the work that's put in and now in his 17th year at 35 years old, he gets to raise that finals MVP trophy once again. A team picture that they'll always remember. The LA Lakers conquer the bubble, defeat Miami in six games, and it's time to celebrate. And it's also time for everybody to go home in what has been just a remarkable experience down here in the Orlando area. Guys, let's start with the Los Angeles Lakers. Mark, first, from a team standpoint and from LeBron James standpoint, your thoughts? Absolutely historic and an incredible job done fighting and battling on the floor and off the floor. The challenges that existed like never before. People say an asterisk. I say an asterisk because it's the hardest championship that I've ever seen won in professional sports. Yeah, and for me, I think, Mike, that you know, all, all this does is just continue to add to all of his accomplishments. And I think Anthony Davis, it was a great performance by him. But I don't think you can overlook the other guys who made timely contributions. Tonight, it was Rondo and Caldwell Pope and amongst others. But they really did surround those guys with a bunch of gritty guys that did just enough to let LeBron James and Anthony Davis carry him to a title. And while the Lakers have this sheer jubilation, the Miami Heat, after such just one of the more enjoyable runs, one of the most incredible runs to the NBA Finals, they come up short of their goal. Mark, it's a hard way for a season to end that really had so many special moments. Well, frustrating for it to end this way, but you know, always pay attention to what you were able to accomplish. This team should be extremely proud, proud and the, the best thing they have going for them, the future's awfully bright, loaded with competitors, great leadership, and they will be around for a long time to come. Yeah, I think really when you think about it, they were dominant to get to the finals. They you know, beat a really good uh, Milwaukee team, Boston. I mean, those teams were outstanding, and they conquered them all. They found some terrific young players to complement Butler, and uh, they're going to be a really good team. They were 12-3 and three during the first three rounds, the Eastern Conference playoffs, and then down 0-2, lost some key players, but still kept fighting to the bitter end until they were blown out tonight here in Game 6. But we still have much more to come. We're going to hear from our studio team and a whole lot more as the celebration will continue down here in the NBA bubble. The Lakers 2020 NBA champions as they defeat the Miami Heat in six games in these unprecedented finals. This season, we won. But we lost. 
what we won. But we lost so much. Then we won. But we lost. Spike in COVID-19 cases. We lost again. Our hearts is with that family. It's just so unjust what's going on. Four second difference. But we won. We won again. Then we won again. And because we lost so much, this win means so much more. What does it mean to be a champion? It means more than just having the skill and desire to win. The greatest accomplishment of my career happened off the court. Champion is more than what you are. It's what you do. We unite, we inspire, we champion. The NBA restart is underway. Months of planning has led us here. The game of basketball has always been bigger than just the ball in the rim. Am I supposed to be looking at somebody? He's going to shoot two and then retain possession of the ball. How about this crowd? Oh, he got it! He got it! And the Suns win the game! The explosion of John Moran! That's a bomb! Oh, oh, for more than just fame. The police shooting of Jacob Blake has sparked an outcry from those in the NBA. We keep loving this country. And this country does not love us back. Despite the overwhelming plea for change, there has been no action. So our focus today cannot be on basketball. We found something we're fighting for. Jamal Murray from downtown. They are the comeback kids from Colorado. Hey, everybody. Blocked by Harden. What a play. Dodgers pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang! And an OB. Oh, I have seen it all. The best team in the NBA is gone. Got it, Jimmy Buckets. Incredible performance here on the bubble. Bam, let's get it out of here. We've been underdogs our whole life. Oh, it's good, Anthony Davis. The LA Lakers headed back to the NBA final. LeBron James is making an historic 10th trip. He just doesn't seem to age or show really any signs of slowing down. So many memories in this three month stretch here in the bubble as LeBron James and the Lakers finish off with the NBA championship, again, has to be one of the most satisfying of his four titles because of last year, the injury, missing the playoffs, and then coming back this year with a lot of new faces, especially Anthony Davis, who earns his first NBA championship. Kind of polishing up that trophy. Boy, must be enjoyable to hold. And again, Mark, when we talk about this experience down here, the players had, their challenge was twofold. Number one, to crown a champion. And number two, to fight for social justice. And although it's clear that so much work still needs to be done, what the players have done down here, they've set a blueprint for future generations of athletes with a platform. And they will be ce celebrated and recognized for us utilizing their voice and making a difference, not settling just to be basketball players and shut up. They have impacted the world. I have not been prouder in my entire life of a group led by Adam Silver as a commissioner, his leadership, led by the players, the organization, and by this organization also. I'm honored to be part of it. And you look at and, and all the great things that happened on the court, but may have been their shining moment, what they've done off the court to raise awareness and, and bring them out enlightenment for so many people. The other part of it, Jeff, is, is the bubble. We spoke about this at the end of the broadcast. Um, it's just everything's so different, not having a crowd even here tonight. Just everything feels so different. The mental challenge of being able to play in the bubble, the isolation, being away from the families cannot be understated. No, the isolation, the lack of an everyday normalcy to your, your day, I, I think these players' teams should be applauded for sticking with it, staying with it, and staying within the protocols that were set forth to keep them safe. I think everybody from 
the NBA league office, to the detail people that put all this together. It's one thing to have an idea, Mike. It's another thing to be able to have enough smart people to work at the problems, solve the problems, and keep our players and our team safe. Everybody hit a home run. So many of us have been in the bubble for a long time. That includes Rachel Nichols. So we go down to Rachel. Thank you, Mike. You know, here at ground level, it's been so interesting to be up close inside this inner layer of the bubble with the players, watching them deal with some of the practical issues. How to get food here is different, right? And remembering to get tested every day is different. And the competitive issues were different as well. These guys were seeing their opponents everywhere they went. Often the teams would load up after a tough and contentious sometimes game, get in their buses, get back to the same hotel, and then be in the elevator with the guy that they were just across the court from. So there were adjustments all the way around. And then, of course, the intense microscope on them in the battle for social justice, the way they put themselves front and center. These guys didn't have to do that. They definitely made themselves targets for a lot of people who were critics of them. But the entire time, they maintained this was something that was so important for them to do. And I mentioned at the end of the trophy ceremony, the families, because for the first, of course, couple months, they couldn't have their families in there. You guys have been so great about describing just the isolation that we heard players talk about. Paul George, very open about the anxiety and depression that caused just never being able to get away from basketball, not having his kids to go crawl all over him when he had a bad game. But then when the families came in, they sacrificed a tremendous amount too. Every player's spouse, parent who came in here, child, young children had to do seven days of quarantine just to be in here. And then they were subject to all of the rules that the players were so really just tremendous all the way around this is the longest season in NBA history the most unusual playoffs ever and yet we had some of the best basketball I've ever seen in the playoffs really really special to be part of this and I want to thank the three of you guys as well for welcoming onto your team this year uh, it's never possible to fill the great Doris Burke shoes but I'm very grateful you let me hang out in them Rachel, it was great, great to have you. Thank you so much for all the, the fabulous work you have done down here. And, you know, years and years from now, people will still be talking about that championship in 2020, the team that then won it in the bubble and all that went through, all the experiences both on and off the court. And one thing that we have certainly learned down here in the bubble is how much the fans mean to the overall experience, both when you're in the arena and when you're watching at home. And the new Laker dynamic duo in their first year together here in the NBA Finals, just putting on elite performances as was expected. Well, there you can see Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom. And the stones throw away, shining a bright purple and gold in honor of the Lakers' big win tonight. Now we have much more coverage of this championship night coming up as we wind down the season. Again, be remiss if we didn't give the most important stat here in the bubble. Zero positive COVID tests by the players, by the coaches and the staff. Congratulations to Adam Silver, the NBA, the NBA Players Association for accomplishing what many said would be impossible. And for us here at ESPN, a heartfelt thanks to over 400 production and technical professionals. A commitment and effort that began back on July 5th, some earlier, making these crazy circumstances seem normal. It's a legendary accomplishment in our industry. Plus their mental challenge of grinding day after day while away from their loved ones, their families, and their homes. We salute you and say bravo. And I know I speak for Mark and Jeff, We've never been more proud to work with a group of remarkable individuals who formed their own championship team here in the bubble. Coming up next, more from the Studio Gang after this timeout.